Hi there. In this video, I will answer you from question number 30 to question number 18 from paper 2H Pearson Adexo IGCSE exam. Exam was taken in November 2023. Let us start with question number 30. Robert asked 11 people how many meetings they attended last week. Here are the results in numerical order. Order is given here 1, 2, 4, 6, 6, 8, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17. They are 11 numbers. Find interquartile range. Interquartile range formula is IQR is equals Q3 minus Q1. Q3 is the upper quartile and Q1 is the lower quartile. Uh, if you remember, we know the formula of finding Q1 uh, that is n by 2, uh, n by 4. This is the 25, 25th percentile. Number of values are 11 divided by 4. We get the answer 2.75. If you get a number in decimal form, we will always round it up to the next whole number. Next whole number of this value is the 3. So you can write the third value will be Q1. So what is the third value here? It is 4. So our Q1 is 4. Same way, if you remember formula for Q3, that is equals to 3 over 4 times n. Here n is the number of values uh, and Q3 is the 70. 5th percentile. 3 over 4 multiply 11. Uh, we will get the answer from calculator. 33 divided by 4. Answer is 8.25. As I told you earlier, if you get the answer in decimals, we always round, round it up. It is not like normal rounding. Uh, we will write the next whole number to this one, 8. So that will be 9th value. 9th value will be Q3. Count the number of values here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, ninth value will be 30. So, our answer will be 30. Now, therefore, IQR will be equals to you substitute the values 13 minus 4 and answer will be 9. So, this is the answer for question number 30. Now, best thing write in the given space here 9 is here. So, question number 13 is done. Question number 14. Here is the graph for this equation, 2y plus x equals to 1, uh, line is given here. By drawing another straight line on the grid, solve simultaneous equations. From the graph even you can solve it, where these two lines will intersect, that will be the answer, solution of these two equations. So a graph for this equation is given here, this graph is for that, this line is for this equation. So we can make here, we can uh, rewrite this equation as the other equation like this, y equals to x plus 2. These two values goes to the right side, so and, and this equation becomes like that, y equals to x plus 2. Now to draw a line, just two points are enough to draw a line. Use any values of x here. So if you use x equals to 1, value of y will be equals to 1 plus 2 equals to 3. So our point will be one point we get from here that is 1 and 3. Now the other point x2 let, let's say x equals to 0 that's your choice you can choose any two numbers any numbers for x. So y will be equals to 0 plus 2 and we get answer for y that is 2. So other point will be 0 and 2. As I told you just two points are enough to draw a line and just mark these two points on the grid paper 1, 3, 0, 2. 1, 3, 1, x is 1 and uh, y is 3 is here. x is 1, y 3 is here. This is the one point. Another point 0 and 2. 0 and 2. x is 0 and y is 2 is this one. Now by using the ruler you, you will join these two points here. Okay. So you will draw a line like this. Hopefully you understand how to draw. So best thing these two lines where these two lines are intersecting each other, that is the solution. So they are intersecting at this point. Here value of x is negative 1. This point is negative 1 and y is 1. So value of x is negative 1 and y value of y is 1. So this will be the answer here.
x is negative 1 and y is 1. Uh, hopefully you understand this question as well. So let us move on. Question number 15. This is the recurring decimal. This one is recurring decimal. Uh, how to solve this one? You will suppose this side as equal to x. So this side equals to x. You can suppose this thing, that x equals to 0 0.372. Uh, here 7272 is recurring. Now, first of all, uh, for to solve this type of questions, just recurring should be on the right side of decimal. So you can multiply this by 10 to bring this 3 on left side of decimal. So multiply by 10. We will get the equation as 10x. When you multiply by 10, so this point goes here. This way. We get answer here 3.72. Uh, 0 0.72 but recurring means they are recurring again and again like that. 7, 2, 7, 2, 7, 2. It continues like this. Okay, now uh, we want uh, to move the point uh, here. Still you will get the same decimal on the right side of the decimal. If you multiply by 100 now, multiply by 100, this, uh, this side becomes 1000 and this will be this point goes here so we get the answer 372.72 is recurring let's say this is equation number one and equation number two to get rid of these recurring decimals you have to minus these two equations equation two minus equation one if you subtract these two equations 1000x minus 10x becomes 990 x and uh, because you are subtracting 7.72 minus 0.72 will be cancelled out and 372 minus 3 will be 369. Now you divide this by 990. You could use calculator here to simplify uh, this one further. If you write this fraction in your calculator press equal it will give you the answer in simplest form and that will be equals to 41 over 110 so this is as required uh, so this question is done as well question number 15 uh, this is the first part okay okay second part express square root 125 plus 80 square root in the uh, over square root 3 in the form square root n. n is an integer, show your working clearly. Actually, we want to get rid of square root from the denominator. To do that, you have to multiply by the same square root, multiply and divide to balance it. Multiply numerator and denominator by square root 3 to get rid of square root from the denominator. 125 plus 80 square root divided by square root 3 multiply square root 3 divided by square root 3. This square root 3 will multiply both of these numbers here and here. And these are two uh, same numbers, so it becomes a square. 125 will multiply by 3 because both numbers are under square root, so you can multiply inside the square root. Plus 80 multiply 3, you can multiply inside the square root. Here, square root 3 becomes a square because you are multiplying by the same. So this square root is cancelled out. You will solve 125 by 3, 125 multiplied by 3, to get the answer 375. 375 square root divide uh, plus 240 square root divided by 3. Now, uh, you can use calculator to simplify further. Write square root 375 in your calculator, it gives you 5 square root 15 plus you write square root 240 in your calculator plus equal you get the answer here 4 square root 15 divide by 3 now both our numbers are like terms 5 and 4 you can add them so 5 plus 4 will be 9 square root 15 divide by 3 now you can cancel out this 3 and 9 so finally our answer is 3 square root 
So write the first uh, bracket as is and multiply the last two, expand them. X will multiply here and X multiply by 4. We get the answer as X square plus 4X. Then multiply negative 5 with X. This is by this one and this by the other one. Minus 5X, negative 20. So 2X plus 3 into X square, all these two numbers. Uh, x is together 4 minus 5 is minus x and then negative 20 minus 20. Now you multiply 2x with all of these numbers. 2x multiply x square is 2x cube. 2x multiply negative x is minus 2x square. 2x minus 20 is minus 40. Then 3x square. Then 3 multiply negative x. So 3 negative 3x. Three, 3 minus 20 is negative 60. Now we will solve the like terms. These two terms are like, so you can solve them together. Our answer is 2x cube minus 2 plus 3 is plus x square. This negative 40 and negative 3x are they are like, so you can solve them together. Negative and negative is plus always. So it is negative 43x and the last term is six constant that is 60. So this is the answer for question number 16. Write this answer in the given space 2x cube plus x square minus 43x and minus 60. Question number 17 p equals a into c plus y. a equals to 8.3, correct to 2 significant figures, c equals to 2, correct to 1 test, uh, significant figure, and y equals 15, correct to the nearest 5. Work out the upper bound for the value of p showing you are working clearly. Now, uh, we know that in case of addition and multiplication, we if you want to get the answer for upper bound of the equation or function, uh, we will use the upper bound, upper bound values for each individual value. So, you must know what is the upper bound for 8.3. So, to get the upper bound for 8.3, uh, we know that uh, it is up to one decimal place. So, you can write as uh, 0 0.1 divided by 2 to get the answer what we have to add to this. So you must add here 0 0.05 and subtract 0 0.05 to find upper and lower bounds. So if you add here 0 0.05 we get answer 8.35 and uh, the lower bound will be 8.25. Okay, we will choose the upper bound. This is upper bound and this is lower bound. Now the other value is the 2. So it is up to one decimal place. So you divide by 2. It will be 0 0.5. You will plus minus 0 0.5 to get the upper and lower bound. Upper bound will be 2.5 by adding. By subtracting you will get the lower bound. That will be 1.5 so this value we will choose here now uh, you are rounding to nearest 5 this number so you take the half of it 5 over 2 so it will be 2.5 you will plus minus 2.5 to get upper and lower bound for 15 if you add uh, 2.5 to 15 we get 17.5 and by subtracting, we get 12.5 because the equation involves addition and multiplication only. Therefore, we will choose upper bound for each individual number. So, 17.5. So, this is upper bound and this is lower bound. Now, value of P will be equals to A. A, you choose 8.35 instead of 8.3 because we want to find upper bound for P. 8.35 into e is 2.5 and y is 17.5 solving 8.35 multiply 20 and we get the answer 167 
So this is the upper bound for the above equation. P equals to 167. So this is the answer for question number 70. Question number 18. A particle is moving along a straight line that passes through the fixed point O. The displacement s meters of the particle from O at time t second is given by s equals 2t cube minus 5t square plus 6t minus 5. Find the value of t when the acceleration of the particle is 5 meter per second square. So acceleration is given uh, and displacement equation is given. If you remember, if we differentiate the displacement with respect to time ds by dt that is the velocity displacement with respect to time is velocity we will differentiate this function with respect to time ds by dt we will get velocity it will be 60 here because power root 3 will multiply 2 and we will reduce 1 power here it will be 2 then this 2 multiply 5 it will be 10t and uh, plus 6 derivative of t is 1 and constant is 0 so this is v now if you differentiate displacement with respect to time we get v and uh, again if you differentiate v with respect to time we get acceleration so dv by dt equals acceleration rate of change in velocity so 2 multi plus 6 will be 12 12 p minus 10 so this is acceleration. Acceleration equals to 12t minus 1, minus 10. Acceleration is given that is 5. So substitute for a that is 5. 12t minus 10. And 12t becomes equals to 15. And finally we get answer here. t equals to 15 by 12. You can answer in decimals 1.25. 1.25 seconds. So this is the answer for question number 18, 1.25. So question number 18 is done. Uh, if you did not understand any question, any step, please let me know or write in the comment box. Thank you.